Hello Youtubers, it is of course me Trollface the Man, and today I am going to be replacing the thermal paste in this original fat uh, PS3. Uh, this is my sister's, uh, she bought it for her kids, and uh, she bought it from somebody on Craigslist, and this, this is one of the original ones from back in 2006, and it's had no maintenance done on it, so this has not had its thermal paste replaced for what would be going on uh, 12, 13 years now. And uh, speaking, speaking from experience, I had a PS3 after about three years that the thermal paste had gone completely kaput. Now she said that they were having problems with this being, uh, you know, stuttering, freezing a lot, um, also having issues with uh, the fans running very high. And I want, I, I'd place my bet that the reason is, is that this thermal paste has dried up into nothing. Uh, I just want to say, as part of this video, this isn't going to be a tutorial on how to take apart this PS3. Uh, I've only taken these apart a few times and it would be a horrible tutorial if I tried doing it. Uh, you can find uh, other tutorials online. This is more just, I'm taking this apart. I am uh, going to show you guys what it looks like from thermal paste not being replaced for like 13 years and then just tell you how it's, uh, how it's working afterwards. So, yeah. First thing is, is that there is somewhere in here, I think it's behind this label here, a screw that you have to, you have to break the label to get at. I actually had to get a specific precision screwdriver set in order to, uh, to do this because there are special hex screws that are tamper resistant in here. So you do need a special screwdriver if you plan on doing this. Okay, could you just maybe come out of this package here? There we go. Let's if I remember this correctly. Well, that was fun. I found out that it's better just to remove the sticker altogether. And uh, the first security screw I came across, the center divot in it was too big for these security drivers and it looked like it was smushed down like that it might have been something that was a defect from the factory so I literally had to take a drill and drill out the center in order to get it where I can take the security screw out uh, with the screwdriver. This is a uh, T15 security security bits right here. And when that does come out just come up. This should. There we go. See, I had to drill out the center there. Unveil all of this. In which case, I am pretty much just going to go through one by one. A lot of these screws are conveniently marked with arrows. Um, like right here, to let you know. Uh, and they actually have those through pretty much every step going through here. So I'm just going to start uh, pulling this apart. Why does that look? Distort it. I don't like that. I'm going to just start pulling this apart. And uh, yeah. I uh, very carefully ran a spudger along the sides here to try and get this to pop up. And it finally just came loose. The thing is you gotta be very careful with this because why is that? I apparently did not loosen the screw enough here. Oh no, I did, but it didn't pull through properly. Okay. Same here. These are the same size, so just to be safe, I'm going to put them back in their appropriate slots, which I lost. And yeah, this is the heart of it. Now, one thing I should say is 
don't mess around with this if you don't know what you're doing because there are going to be capacitors and stuff like that in here that are going to be potentially very dangerous. Um, so, yeah. This is the Blu-ray player. Just the amount of dust in here I can see causing a lot of problem itself. Be very careful with the ribbon, ribbon cables. Oh, this is going to need to be dusted. This is the power supply. You can see some pretty big capacitors in there and that can be very, very dangerous. So be careful. There's, there are a bunch of screws that are conveniently marked once again. These luckily all are like pretty much Phillips. So much easier to, uh, to take apart. And it's a good idea to try and organize these screws the best you can. I usually like to leave them still uh, in whatever holes that they've been taken out of if I can keep them together with the devices. And always be careful, don't don't go tugging or anything like that too hard. You always should uh, try and lift it up gently and see if it comes up by itself. And if it doesn't, it's probably because there's something else there that needs to be uh, unscrewed first. There's a little Wi-Fi wire right here. I think that's for the Wi-Fi. I'm just going to make sure that's off the power supply so I don't... Yeah, it's the Wi-Fi wire. Plug this. And unplug this. And once again, try and keep these screws consolidated. I'm going to dig a little bit deeper in here and uh, try and get down to the CPU. Oh yeah, things are a little bit dusty in here. Clean that out. So I can actually finally see though the uh, CPU and GPU. You could actually see these are the mounting brackets for on this side, but I'm going to have to take off this, uh, this fan here. To actually get at them. I think I'm gonna even need to take off this entire cover here if I remember properly. Hmm. Yep, it looks like I could have left the fan in. I just wasted effort doing that. This is exactly why I am not making a uh, tutorial video on how to do this because the proper way to do it definitely ain't the way that I'm doing it. So I would want to uh, steering you guys wrong. So, I don't know, is this just going to be a bunch of clips? No, oh, I think I do remember this from a while ago. That it's a bunch of clips that you gotta slide out and that they're a real big pain in the butt. Alright. Nope, that was just me being stupid again. Apparently, the plastic did not need to be taken off. But yeah, this, this is why that, uh, this is probably why we're having some issues with overheating and such. I'm pretty sure that uh, thermal paste isn't supposed to look like uh, like cracked dirt in a desert. Like, <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's completely dry. This one has a little bit to it left. This one, not so much. So I'm gonna clean those up and we're gonna put on some brand new Icy Diamond. Yeah, the, uh, the thing that was holding this down was actually the uh, the tension plates on the other side of the motherboard, which you'll see me refasten later. So I was just being stupid with that too. Once again, haven't taken these apart in a long time. That is clean to what I uh, consider a satisfactory amount. This was my personal computer and uh, you know, I was trying to squeeze every little tiny bit of, uh, of uh, life out of it for overclocking or whatever, keeping the thermals down, I would probably clean it a little bit better, maybe even buff it up a little bit, but uh, for this, I'm going to say that that is good. 
because as we all know, unfortunately the PS3's performance does not get any better no matter what you do. Trust me, I would buy a PS3, uh, like if they remade a PS3 with better graphics that can run like a 60 frames per second, but with old PS3 games, not digital downloads, but I can just take one of my old PS3 games, pop it in there and play, I would do it. But unfortunately, they don't have any of that. And uh, there's no way to upgrade. So this is Icy Diamond, uh, which is a very good thermal compound. And I am going to make sure that I, pretty liberal about its application. One thing about Icy Diamond is that it is pretty viscous stuff. You honestly don't want this because this is going to be introducing air bubbles, but I'm going to put a little bit more on just to be safe. There we go. And the same over here. And this actually uses diamond particulate to, uh, diamond particulate. And this plunger is not a very good application method for this stuff. It uses diamond particulates, which is super high conductivity, um, even higher than silver. And uh, they're just microscopic diamonds, and they help heat transfer pretty dang well. I think that should be enough. I don't want to go... The thing is, with uh, thermal paste, contrary to what a lot of people believe, too little is always worse than too much. And Linus Tech Tips have already shown that even if you put on too much thermal paste, as long as you have a mounting mechanism that puts a, a decent amount of pressure on it, it should just squeeze out the excess. So too much makes a mess, too little overheats your, uh, overheats your device. And you're not supposed to actually spread out icy diamond because it can introduce air bubbles. You're supposed to just push it down and tighten the uh, torsion mechanisms and leave it be and you're not supposed to lift it up and check its spread or anything like that because that can also introduce air bubbles so unfortunately we're just gonna have to go with hopefully this uh, this goes down good okay so the torsion mechanism for the uh, PlayStation is actually these brackets and they go like this on the outside. And you can see that they have a bend to them. And then when you use these, there we go. Oh shoot, that came off on a second. Mm, this is not going back on now. Anyways, as you uh, tighten these, they will inherently put force uh, back onto the, the CPU, uh, the processors, and hopefully spread out that paste. Now I'm kind of worried because you know, the IC diamond is pretty thick, and these probably don't get the best torsion imaginable, but eh, hopefully they will. It's definitely going to be better, whatever it is, it's going to be better than what was uh, currently on there. I, like I said, I had a PS3 that was like six years old, and uh, when I replaced the thermal paste, it was just horrible, and I had nothing but problems. Like, I couldn't play Oblivion, couldn't play Fallout 3, I couldn't play whatever, because at times the PS3 would just be like, nope, that's too much. Get like 10 frames per second, and then a hard freeze, and then it just kept happening more and more frequently and I finally decided to pull it apart put some new thermal paste in and lo and behold that seemed to solve a majority of the problems I'm not tightening one side too much at once because I don't want uh, uneven pressure so I'm trying to tighten these about the same as the uh, PS3 heats up a bit too we should get more of a uh, of a spread 
as the thermal paste warms up, it will want to spread out naturally. <coughs> so, so, one last little check to make sure these are sufficiently tightened. Okay, and now goes the reassembly process. All right, the video might be a little bit darker right now because I have one of my lights uh, turned off so I can plug this in. Uh, good practice before uh, ever reassembling something like this, uh, including computers when you go to build them the first time, is test to make sure that everything's working. So uh, this is the power button right here. Power's turning on. Sounds like it's reading the disc. We're not getting any types of beeping that might indicate an error code. Let's try the eject button. Eject is working. <laughs> That's uh, kid handling of disc if you, uh, if you couldn't tell. I think the Blu-rays are tough. So yeah, I think this might be good to reassemble. Come on. Yeah, there we go. And after I do, I'm gonna test it and make sure uh, the graphics and everything else are coming up okay, and we should be good, hopefully. Beautiful. All right, once again, uh, dark, because I have one of my lights turned off to have this plugged in. So it's using the only available extension cord. But uh, this has been reassembled. Very dusty. Uh, and I'm just gonna test it to see whether or not it works. So the first thing is power on. Indicator lights going green and uh, blue, which is good. And eject. Perfect. Now I just gotta make sure the graphics are working. So I'm gonna take this upstairs and I am going to see if it works. Uh, assuming that it should hopefully work. Nothing else is wrong. Uh, yeah, but anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. And if you like the video, please remember to hit that like button. And uh, this is, once again, a pretty good indicator of why you should, uh, why you should replace the thermal paste in your old consoles. Uh, Having a very bad connection like that can potentially destroy the uh, the chips, the processors on there because they get so hot that they uh, expand and contract and it causes the solder joints to break. And part of the reason for yellow light of death or the red ring of death for the PS3 and the Xbox. It, it was so funny because I seen a, a post on a forum where somebody was asking uh, why they should replace the thermal paste <clears throat> in their PlayStation. And all of these people, I think this might have been PSX, all of these people were just basically like, oh, you're such an idiot. Oh, no, there's no reason to replace the thermal paste. Oh, uh, Sony puts in their thermal paste and the, you're stupid for wanting to replace it. And I can tell you one thing, I mean, it was like 10 people in a row end up saying this and it's like, I'll tell you one thing, the person wanting to replace the thermal paste is not the stupid one. It most definitely are the people that are calling them stupid because obviously they have no clue about thermal paste and about the fact that it degrades. Anyways guys, thank you very much for watching and bye!